Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we will be starting a brand new playthrough on legendary difficulty for the Spanish Empire starting in 1890, which means that once again this will be a 70 year campaign. So, hopefully you guys are ready. It's going to be crazy. Now, our goals are simple. We will rebuild the Spanish Empire back to its former glory. That is our goal. We will do everything in our power to uh, reclaim the fear that the Spanish Navy once had brought to the entirety of the world. The respect that came with it. So, uh, hopefully you guys are ready. Now, I have prepared a little something, something to read here, so uh, give me just a moment, and uh, I will try, try to pull this up real quick. In the late 19th century, the sun had begun to set on the once mighty Spanish Empire. Once the envy of the world, her fleets ruled the seas, her armies conquered continents, and her riches flowed like rivers of gold. But the tides of time are relentless, and the glory of Spain faded, leaving behind shattered dreams of lost grandeur. By 1890, Spain found herself at a crossroads. Her once proud armada lay in ruins, her colonies slipping from her grasp, and her power waning with each passing day. But from the ashes of defeat, a new vision emerged, a vision of resurgence, of rebirth, of reclaiming her rightful place among the great powers of the world. With determination burning in their hearts, their sons and daughters of Espana embarked on a monumental endeavor. Ship by ship, cannon by cannon, they forged a new armada, one that would surpass all that came before it. The fires of industry blazed, the hammers rang, and the spirits of the Spanish ingenuity ignited like never before. From the drawing boards of brilliant minds to the decks of mighty dreadnoughts, innovation became the cornerstone of Spain's naval resurgence. With cutting-edge technology and unwavering resolve, they sought to reshape the seas, to reclaim their dominion, and to carve their name into the annals of history once more. And so, as the dawn of a new era breaks upon the horizon, the Spanish Empire stands ready to chart a course towards destiny. The world watches with bated breath as the reborn armada sets sail. A symbol of Spain's unwavering spirit, her undenying resilience, and her unyielding determination to rise anew. So, without further ado... Let's get this party started. Taller Talk, El uh, Samu, how's it going? Uh, in NPC, Lexo, John, Aiden, Corey, Dr. Van Gelder, Kevin, Jackal, welcome to the start of the brand new campaign in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. So uh, we are going to be starting with an auto-generated fleet for those of you who... Uh, don't understand that means that the ai will generate our first fleet for us uh which tends to be a little bit more difficult for us because if i go out and i build my first my first fleet i tend to just start dominating right away so this kind of nerfs us at the beginning we will be playing from 1890 all the way through the campaign which i believe ends in 1965 so yeah it's 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 a long time um last the last campaign took us seven months to complete to put that into perspective <laughs> it takes a long time uh but we will be also giving a shout out to mr brother monroe uh i have installed my first ever mod for ultimate admiral dreadnoughts and the dreadnought improvement project that brother monroe has set forth so uh, i look forward to learning the ins and outs of the campaign on the the legendary difficulty with his mod so uh yeah without further ado 
I think you guys already know. Uh, my story was a lot more interesting than this, but this gives a nice little synopsis as well. So basically, for you guys that don't know, uh, we are picking up right towards the end of the Spanish-American War, or right after the Spanish-American War, where the Spanish suffered a massive defeat at the hands of the upcoming uh, American Navy, um, especially at it would have been the Battle of Santiago? Question mark? I think it is. Uh, where the American Navy uh, cornered the Spanish Armada while it was uh, in port and utterly decimated them. Um, so that's kind of where we're picking up. So we're probably just going to get straight into this. Let's go. Hopefully you guys are ready. But uh, welcome and happy Easter to everybody. Uh, we will be starting a new campaign. Uh, let's delete 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 no reason to have those let's go ahead and start the campaign mvp how's it going Corey, can't stay long on a road trip back from a comedy show in milwaukee appreciate you my dude you have a safe trip hopefully now it does take a little bit to uh sim up to our starting point so we got a little bit of time to sit and chit chat for the moment but uh, hopefully everybody's having a great easter weekend Spain is going to be difficult. It is absolutely going to be difficult. Um, I, I don't think it's going to be our most difficult start, but it's definitely going to be difficult. And being in Europe in and of itself is going to be difficult, as we've seen with our uh, Italian campaigns. Uh, there's a lot of action that goes on very early on. So we're going to have to, we're going to, have to be on our toes. Uh, we're going to have to bring our A game. But I believe that we can do it. Make your own fleets. Oh, we will. We will. But for the starting fleet, I feel like it, it adds to the story, right? So the, the, whole, the whole moral of the story is that uh, we're coming up on the, the backside of a major naval defeat at the hands of the United States uh, at the Spanish-American War. So our fleet is essentially in ruin. They're not up to par. So it's going to be up to us, the new admiral, to come in and save the day, essentially. We're going to come in. We're going to have a lot of new ideas, how to build ships better than ever, uh, regain the strength of the Spanish Armada, and uh, retake control over uh, a lot of territory in the world. That is our goal. I, I don't think we're going to go full, like, crazy uh, world conquest, but you guys know how it goes. Like, once we start rolling, it's hard to stop right? Like once we start, it's like, okay, we just want this specific area. And the next thing you know, we've got the entirety of the world under our control. So it, it can get kind of crazy. So hopefully you guys are ready. It's going to be fun. What up, Destroyer? How's it going? Good eye. Xbox store has uh, bugged out. Interesting. Yeah, that's not ideal. But uh, hopefully you guys are ready for this. This should be an interesting one. Viva España. There you go. I love these, these campaigns. I'm not going to lie. Uh, especially playing with different nations. Obviously, a lot of people want me to play the U.S. again, and I will at some point. But being able to play some of the, the smaller nations and uh, really challenge ourselves gives us a lot of, a lot of different uh, fun that we can have. And uh, I look forward to it. The, the Japanese campaign was freaking insane uh, all the way through. We had a lot of struggles early on. We overcame them. Uh, we had to destroy our fleet at one point to rebuild. Like we, we went through it in that campaign. And we ended up literally controlling the majority of the world, which was insane. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to a new campaign. Um, and we know that Spain, for whatever reason, Spain gets bullied in this game. Uh, the computer does not do a very good job of controlling Spain in this game because they get bullied hard uh, in Europe. So I'm hoping to, uh, you know, give, give a little some some back to Europe for uh, all the bullying they've been given uh, Spain over the years. What up, Rainbow? How's it going? Happy Easter to you as well. How many streams will be with this campaign? Oh, it's 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 months, my guy. It's a long time. We usually do one stream a month, uh, a week. Um, we may end up doing more than one stream a week, depending on how quickly we want to go through this. Um, I was kind of giving myself a little bit of a break because seven months of the same same campaign gets pretty crazy. 
but yeah, the last campaign legitimately took us seven months to complete. So that's kind of where you can look at in terms of this probably going to be somewhere in that same neighborhood. Uh, we'll see. Triple H, good to see you, my dude. Be safe down there. As we're starting to warm up, you're starting to cool off, so I can imagine things are starting to get pretty nasty down there in Australia again. So be safe. I know here in, in Ohio, we uh, are starting to get our storms. That's, that's, that's that time of year. So it's definitely, definitely going to be a fun one. But uh, we actually have a lot of stormy weather the next couple of days with a huge, huge severe weather threat on Tuesday to, to look into that I might actually decide to go chasing down south uh, drive a couple hours south to see if I can't get into into the path of some of the nasty storms just for the fun of it. So we'll see. All right. So uh, first things first, we've got uh, the world map. So as I mean, the good news is we're going to stand out pretty well because we are orange, right? Like everything that we own is orange. Now, obviously, the thing that I'm worried about with Spain early on is because of the fact that we do still have colonies over here in the Caribbean. Uh, the United States is not going to be our friend, right? Like they are, they are not going to be happy with us. So uh, we're going to have to defend that really early. And we don't have submarines and stuff to help uh, protect our transports. So we're going to have to have a, uh, a deep water Navy that's capable of defending our, our colonies. We also have some, some colonies over here in Asia that's going to be a problem. Uh, we got all this, this territory over here in the Philippines and the Caroline Islands. Uh, so we are going to have to defend a lot of territory. Uh, otherwise, we're going to end up losing this territory. Now, the other side of things is uh, we do have apparently a fleet of just 18 ships. We have six heavy cruisers and 12 light cruisers to start with. Uh, that's not ideal. That is not what I would call a great uh, deep water navy, but uh, that's what we've got to start with. So we will go ahead and uh, start looking at our financial situation. Uh, we are at least making money, so that's better than I can say for most of us. So let's go ahead and uh, increase our shipbuilding capacity because we need that as much as possible. Um, obviously, transport capacity has got to go way up as well. Uh, we are going to lose some money early on. Uh, maybe we not go that hard. Let's just increase it by a little bit at a time. Um, I'll lose a million dollars a month for now, I guess. That's fine. Uh, the next thing is, let's look at our political st uh, standpoint here. So the Spanish Navy is going to be, uh, we're going to be struggling. We got seven and a half billion or million dollars, no, seven and a half billion dollar GDP, which puts us in last place. <laughs> yep. Last place. Love it. It's where I love to be. Uh, but as you can see, we're already at very, very stressed uh, conditions with the United States of America. So we can do one of two things. We can either continue to uh, get ready to prepare for war against the United States, uh, which probably will end poorly for us, considering we have like no big ships and they have 10 big ships. Like, they have a massive, massive fleet compared to us. 184,000 tons versus uh, 52,000 tons. So they have roughly three times the Navy that we do in, in total tonnage. Uh, I don't like our odds. So I think early in this, I think we're going to probably want to uh, improve relations with the United States. So that'll be our first goal here. Try to get on good terms with them for now. Uh, anything that pops up that allows us to potentially uh, increase our GDP is going to be something that we want to do. Um, crew training is going to have to be dropped for now. Um, I, I don't want to spend too much on crew training. Uh, let's keep it at less than a million dollars per month. Uh, I know it's not ideal, but we need, we need to keep the tech budget. We need to keep the transports growing because transports are what earns us money. Uh, from a research standpoint, I kind of liked the way that we ended up doing the last, uh, holy mother of God, what has happened here? Okay, so now we're starting to see some of the, the mod pop in, right? So our research is going to take a very, very long time, according to this. Uh, I don't like that. 
I don't like that at all. Uh, how are we going to uh, deal with that? Like, we don't have any tech budget. That's that's our problem. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're definitely, like, we could go to war early. Uh, let's see, San Juan, Bilbao, I mean... We could go to war early, which would allow us the extra wartime economy. Um, but again, I just don't think that that's a good idea. Um, and then, of course, if we look at the other sides of things, we have a 2% army logistics bonus currently. So, I mean, roughly in the same neighborhood. What is our population? So we have a current army force of 211,000. So that puts us not last... Uh, it puts us right about mid, mid pack, but definitely not strong in terms of, uh, army either. I mean, the British have a god dang army force of 1.2 million. That's absurd. That's absurd. And, uh, the French, they're stronger than us as well. Uh, obviously the French are going to be a, a rival right off the bat that we're going to have to contend with. Um, because if we're going to want to expand we're going to have to go through France. So, uh, that is something we're going to have to contend with very early on. Um, they also have some key territory down here in Africa that we could potentially take from them. But again, this is all stuff that's going to have to take time. If we look at the French Navy, they have five battleships, 18 heavy cruisers, 33 light cruisers. I mean, the Navy difference between our Navy and theirs is going to be ridiculous. Uh, we just don't have the, the financial backing to be able to do a large Navy right now, which is going to hurt us in the long run because uh, we need to protect our territories. So uh, the first thing we need to do is figure out where our fleets are currently hiding. So we have two light cruisers here. We have one light cruiser there. Heavy cruiser there. Heavy cruiser, light cruiser. Um, two light cruisers there. So what I'm thinking is that we take these two light cruisers and the heavy cruiser and light cruiser there, and we make these guys our um, Caribbean fleet. Like, these guys are going to go protect our, our, our interests down here in the Caribbean. Um, again, building up relations with the United States is probably going to be a, a key for this playthrough. Um, I, I'm not going to have a lot of allies. I'm not going to try to go, like, full diplo, diplomat role. Uh, we're, we're still going to be aggressive in terms of trying to take Europe as best as possible. Uh, it's not going to be easy. We got all the powerhouses right here. So we're, we're going to be struggling, especially early on. So that's, that's something we're just going to have to contend with, but we'll get these fleets merged together here. Um, where is the rest of our fleet though? Uh, we actually have some in the Caribbean. Hold that thought. I didn't realize we had them spread out. We have a heavy cruiser at Havana. Have a heavy cruiser and light cruisers there at uh, Puerto Rico at San Juan. Okay, fair enough. Um, it's not much of a fleet, but it is a fleet, so it's better than nothing. Um, I don't think we have any territory in South America, but we definitely have Pacific territories. Okay, do we have anybody in these, these uh, over here in the Philippines? Okay, we have a heavy cruiser, light cruiser, nobody there. Light cruiser, Guam, nobody at Saipan. Light cruiser at uh, Panape. Okay, I'm going to probably bring these guys together. Um, we're going to be based in the Philippines. Uh, or maybe we'll have a we'll have these guys based at Guam. That makes sense. So one light cruiser there. Let's get this light cruiser moved over to Guam as well. Get those guys together. Uh, we have a heavy cruiser, light cruiser to protect the West Philippines for now. And again... The, the biggest issue for us is going to be just the start. Like, we have territory in South Africa as well, or East Western Africa over here at Beta. Equatorial Guinea. We definitely can't afford to get into a fight with the, the French anytime soon. It's going to take a while because the French will just raffle stomp us. Um, 
Yeah, we're this is gonna be a rough playthrough, boys. Goal is to to do everything in our power to reclaim and rebuild, but uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a struggle. Um, can we actually go ahead and design a battleship? That'll be the question. Uh, it looks like they did design a battleship class. The uh, they they came up with a battleship design, but they never actually decided to build any. Like the only thing that we currently have right now is some uh, heavy cruisers and light cruisers. So uh, budget probably didn't allow for it. So we're actually just going to go ahead and delete this design. And we will come up with our own design for a battleship. Uh, now, obviously, we're not going to be able to build a ton of them. But uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what kind of uh, ships that we come up with here. Um, currently capable of building up to how big of a ship? 8,500 tons. So let's just go for an 8,500 ton battleship. Um, we have to upgrade our shipyard in order to do uh, better there. But uh, yeah, looks like this little floating barge is going to be our battleship for now. I used I, I did UK and Germany a long, long time ago before the main campaign came out. We will eventually revisit those. Uh, but I've been trying to do some of the other nations that they added in afterwards because we did a bunch of uh, Germany and UK like a long time ago. Um, all right, so torpedo boats early on are useless. I'm not even going to bother with torpedo boats, but coming up with a battleship early, probably going to be a good idea. Um, I am going to bring this back. Uh, actually, I might just move that forward. Let's move that forward. Uh, secondary tower. Move that all the way to the back. And then figure out what we can do for, for freaking guns here. Alright, so starting out with 9-inch uh, guns wouldn't necessarily be the worst, but they're not the most accurate either. Which is making me kind of want to go for like a 10 inch gun. Like I feel like the, what is the reload time? 103 seconds. 130, 162 seconds. I mean, there really isn't a big difference. I mean, 103 to 160. I mean, it's a, it's a minute longer reload for a 12 inch gun. So maybe we go for the uh, 10 inch guns. Double barrels for reasons. Let's put it there. All right. Um, secondaries. I mean, early on, we don't need crazy secondaries. So we'll probably go with like a four inch if we can get away with it. Okay. So four inch guns fit there. Okay, so it's actually, like, if we want the 4-inch guns, we want them there on that second bubble. I hate the fact that this one, like, ended up mounting, like, forward. Okay. Okay. So now we rotate that this way, and that this way. There we go. So that gives us a lot of four-inch guns in there. Uh, this one's kind of driving me crazy, so let's go ahead and rotate that out as well. We get some sort of uh, uniformity there with the secondaries. I don't hate it. Um, we're going to need funnels, so let's go ahead and get some funnels in here. Okay, we are very slow, as you might expect. Um, let's go with standard crew quarters. We're overweight. Shocker. Shocker. Uh, I was going to have to reduce the range. These are not meant to be like full-on ocean-going dreadnoughts. I mean, they are, but they're not. I and mean, they're definitely not dreadnoughts. Um, they're not fast, 
13 knots is definitely going to be pretty slow. Coal fired. We don't have anything tech wise there. It's going to be compound armor. That'll give us a little bit of weight. Uh, shouldn't have any tech there. Uh, Citadel 1 to give us a little bit more armor protection. Um, loading for standard ratio. Probably would be a good idea. Um, brown powder, black powder. Uh, enhanced reloading. That's going to make it a little bit slower. Uh, I am going to increase the barrel length if we can. Uh, I lied. We can't. We don't have the tech. We got to in increase our technology on these. So... That's going to be a while. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be very accurate. Most likely. Uh, we do have to kind of bring back the armor a little bit. Let's go with uh, an 11-inch belt. We actually have a hundred or 200% engine efficiency, which is a bit crazy. We don't need that much. Um... We get rid of that we have a little bit of an aft weight offset so we can kind of move that forward a little bit to get rid of that put that there that puts us under the limit so that's good go with a four inch belt four inch aft belt uh, we've got an inch deck inch superstructure uh, let's bring the conning tower down to like a 10 inch conning tower that'll allow us to go up to like a three inch superstructure armor uh, I would like to get the main deck and stuff up to like two inches if we can. Okay, fair enough. And then, of course, inner deck will increase to where we can. That'll help protect the uh, Citadel a little bit. But uh, I think that's going to be our battleship. It's going to be a bit expensive, $29.2 million. Uh, but... It should be a solid starter for us. Uh, actually, I can I can min-max a little bit better. Let's go with 10 inches there, 3 inches. Uh, the barbette can be 10 inches as well. Um, let's go 3 inches if we can. Okay, can't quite get 3 inches there. That's maxed on the 4-inch guns. Okay, so we actually have about 500 tons that we can play with here, which is beautiful. So 11-inch main belt. Uh, let's bring up the fore and aft belt to like 6 inches. If we can. Okay, we definitely can. Um, okay, can we go 8 inches on both? I think we can. Okay, 10 inches. Oh my god, we're going to have all the armor. Holy crap. I'm not used to having this, this much armor. This is kind of crazy. All right, well, uh, this is going to be pretty juicy, I think. Uh, this thing has a slight aft weight offset. We can adjust for that, I think, a little bit. Um, yeah, we can move this forward a little bit to help. Uh, we actually can't move that forward any. It, I mean, it's it's a negligible aft weight offset. Pitch and roll is perfect, like, is, is incredible. I don't mind that at all. Um... Yeah, I, I mean, just adding more armor can't hurt, right? I, we could go, actually, instead of more armor here, let's go with speed. Like, what if, what if we go with, like, a 20-knot battleship? What, what is, actually, what is our hull's uh, best speed? 16.2 uh, knots. So, let's just go 16.2. It is overweight now, so we'd have to drop a little bit of armor. Okay, can we just go 16? Okay, we can, but we're still 200 tons overweight now. Um, all right, it's 10 inch fore and aft belt with a 11 inch there. I mean, we could drop that down a little bit, I suppose. Let's go down to like a nine inch belt. Okay, it's closer. Okay, we're 102 tons over. Okay, well, let's drop this down just a little bit more then.
Okay, 15 is too low. There we go. Beautiful. So 15.2 knots is what we're capable of doing. Uh, we still have decent armor everywhere. Uh, should be decent in terms of keeping riffraff at bay. We've got the punching power. This will also only take... How long will this take? 13 months to build. That's not bad. That's not too shabby. Uh, slight aft weight offset, but not that bad. Um, yeah. What do we call this thing? Our first uh, battleship. What do, what, do we, what do we call this? What up, Todd? Soup Bowl? How's it going? Joel? Good to see you guys. Is everything looking good on your guys' end? Make sure that, like, nothing's dropping frames or anything like that. Everything look good? It always, always bothers me when I first start a new new campaign. We call it España? The ship is ugly, but, I mean, it's not that bad for what it is. I mean, this is an 1890, right? Oh, wait, I forgot. Casemates. We have casemates. I forgot about that. Uh, if we're going to use casemates, I do want to throw a 5-inch casemate in there. That gives us a little bit of extra firepower on the corners. There are no more mounts, so how how heavy are we now? Uh, 225 tons overweight now. Ouch. I just like having the idea of having those 5-inch guns there. Uh, we have plenty of 4-inch guns up top. Um... All right, let's drop this down like 14. That's not enough. Did I, I thought I, I dropped it down to 14. Oh, it doesn't go any lower than 15 knots apparently. Okay. Um, fair. I thought it started at like 13 knots. How does it not go back down to 13 knots? Okay, these are 29 tons. These are half the weight. Okay, let's get rid of the 5-inch guns as much as I want them. Like, I can't afford the weight. And I don't want to strip even more armor off this too much. 11-inch um, belt. Uh, where, do we, where do we save some weight here? Um, okay, let's go 7-inch. Seven 7-inch. Seven oh, that's still, still not enough. Okay, let's get rid of that. Just drop a little bit of deck armor. Huh. Go with six inch casemate, three inch, 38 tons. That's all I got to come up with. 38 tons. Dude, come on. I'm like right there. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, back to the naming. What do we call this? Hosho, Iowa. Come on. It's Spanish, guys. Let's go. Ghost Knights say in España. Majestuoso. Devastation. That's French. Yuyaki, Atlantico, all right, we'll call it Espana for now, now obviously, I don't have the uh, fancy character, and I don't know how to make it, so we'll just, it's Espana, all right, save it, all right, that'll take like 13 months to build, I feel like we're going to want more than one of them, but I don't know if we can afford. Lamborghini was a Spanish bull. Yeah, I know. What up, Noriko? 
Um, so we do have a battleship build now. So we'll see how that goes. All right. If we if we want to do this, we probably want to have three of these. One for the home fleet, one for the Caribbean, and one for the uh, Asian fleet. So we'll build three. These are actually going to be flagships, right? Like legitimate flagships. Like we're not going to be able to spam battleships with this early uh, income. That's for sure. Uh, we are very very limited in our amount of money uh, which is definitely not ideal let's drop this down a little bit more dude this is that's gonna be rough i ain't gonna lie it's gonna be rough all right well that's that uh we'll have one in uh spain We'll build it in Barcelona. One will be in uh, uh, Santiago. And one will be in uh, Manila, in the Philippines. Uh, this heavy cruiser can be built anywhere. Uh, probably want to send it out to the Philippines. So we'll send it to Manila. Gives us a little bit more presence in Asia. All right. I think that's everybody set up. All right. Well, we're going to be losing money, but there ain't much I can do about it for now. Um, who, do, who do we go to war with early on? Like, if we look... Who is, who is our potential target? I would say probably either Italy or Austro-Hungary, right? So five battleships. They have a total of 43 ships. Um, overall, like, we don't have any territory bordering each other, so there's no chance that they, they like, land invade us. Um, they still have a massive fleet compared to us, but we hopefully can, can maneuver around that. Uh, and then Italy is the other one. They have only cruisers, so Italy looks to be possible for our uh, our first target. Um, do they border any of our territory? They do not, so no no land invasions necessarily. Okay, fair enough. All right, so Italy might be our first target. They have a bunch of cruisers. I mean, that seems like the perfect first first step for us. So yeah. Italy, we're coming for you. Let's go. King Felipe the second. Oh yeah, we will have to name them. Hold, hold that, hold that thought. Hold the phone. I forgot. We got to name. We got to name the uh, battleships. See how long it takes to build. They. Okay, here we go. All the, all the passages are getting opened. All right, let's go ahead and uh, politics, increase tension with the Italians. Yes, please. Um, boy, we are, we are not going to get anything unlocked anytime soon. That's for sure. It's going to take a while. It's all right, though. We know how this goes. It just takes a while to get started. Okay, so we have the Espana. Uh, let, let's go with... Uh, whoops. King Philip the second. Got you. And then the third battleship, what do we got? The Atlantico, the Lamborghini... Jamie the first. Despacito. 
Got you. All right. All right, so that is that is all of that taken care of. There's nothing really going on for us. How did the uh, politics with the U.S. go? I didn't look. Okay, it did work. So we've reduced tensions with the U.S. a little bit. Uh, I definitely want to continue to try to do that because trying to protect this territory over here against the United States is a gigantic pain in our neck. So we want to avoid that at all costs. Um, the Italians are an ideal sort of target for us because they don't really have an easy path I mean, it's just, it's going to be mostly Mediterranean. Yeah, they have some stuff out here, but, like, I doubt that they would end up coming over to the Asian uh, seas for us. I guess they could come to the Pacific, but I would imagine most of their fleets probably in this neighborhood. Uh, Noriko coming in re-upping for 24 months. Thank you so much, man. Get a goat in the chat for Noriko. All right, let's keep it going. No reason to dilly-dally. The Huracan, Madrid, Catalonia, Sesto Elemento. Yeah, you guys are going ham in the chat. All the Lamborghinis. Interesting news. The Austro-Hungarian Empire warns their head of admiralty for its excessive naval expenditures. Shocker. And we have successfully punched the Italians in the face. That's good news. Good news. Uh, I don't think we want to pick a fight with the Russians anytime soon because, yeah, they got a bigger budget than we do. They... Why do the British have such a large army? Is it because of all their territories? Probably is. They got 65 provinces, for God's sakes. Yeah, that's probably why. Okay. Well, um, we are getting close to making money again, so that's, that's good news. Um... I kind of want to just go ham with the transport capacity for now because that's the quickest way to start making money. Uh, we can drop the crew training all the way down for now. Uh, there's no real need to go crazy. Maybe just bump it a little bit to make sure that we're still training some people. But we're not at war, so it's not really a big uh, problem for the moment. But welcome, everybody, to... Uh, our ultimate admiral dreadnoughts campaign don't forget if you guys do enjoy this make sure you guys punch that like button it does uh does help the channel out a lot okay i know these these streams aren't for everybody but uh they were getting pretty popular with the japanese so i'm hoping that this this is another one of those campaigns that that could be really fun the german empire demands to stop naval activities near their borders as they consider them a hostile action the prime minister requires your advice on how to reply Agree to their demand and try to pacify them with a generous compensation. I'm not paying the money. Y'all are crazy. Refuse to comply. Our fleet must be free to navigate on global waters. Uh, or make a counteroffer. Try to negotiate. I mean, I'm not paying them. Okay? That's not happening. So for now, we will simply uh, just tell them that our fleet is free to navigate on global waters. Um... We don't actually have any fleets near their territories, so please explain. Where their ter- I guess maybe this? Do we have a fleet down here? Probably do. No, we don't. We don't even have a fleet down here. So where is their territory that we're encroaching on? That makes no sense. It's just the game trying to screw me over. I don't want to fight the Germans right now. <laughs> How strong are the Germans? Are they a problem? Of course they are. Oh, of course they are. Yeah. Don't want to fight them right now. Italy, yes. Nobody else. So increase tension with Italy some more. Uh, we are spending... We do have a lot of unrest going on, though. That is that is not ideal. I think we can all agree on that. Um, financially, I mean, we're losing a ton of money. But the only way to gain money is to lose money, so... We got to spend it to make it. We can drop our tech budget some more here. Try to save a little bit of money. Like this, this is, oof, this is rough. But I, I got to grow the transport capacity. Have to. Don't have a choice. Keep going. Next.
the British British Empire warns their head of admiralty. Dude, all of the all of the AI are getting warned because their fleets are too big. They're spending too much money. We're the only ones starting to make money now, baby. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. We got to make the money. The only way to get money early in this game is to grow that transport capacity. That's how you get you you grow your economy. Uh, anything that pops up that allows you to increase your GDP is what you want. You never want to cut your GDP early. So we we'll just keep it rolling. Ain't much we can do right now. Uh, we can't poke them back to back, but we are slowly increasing tension with them. Um, in terms of the United States, they're still not happy with us. So in between increasing tension with the uh, Italians, we're going to improve with the United States if we can. What up, Sean? How's it going? Monkey, appreciate you dropping in. Yeah, you just got to work on getting, uh, using islands and stuff to close the distance. You can't always just barge straight in and go to, go to secondary range. Sometimes you, you got to work your way in. Massachusetts is fine the way it is. I don't have any issues with it. And we failed to improve relations with the United States. Not ideal, if I'm being honest. Keep increasing tension with the Italians. If we get to go to war with the Italians relatively early, uh, hopefully this will be a good way for us to uh, get into wartime budget or wartime economy, which will allow us to grow a lot quicker than we normally would. Um, but we got to be able to at least hold up our end of the bargain as well. So we're just going to slowly ramp up our tech budget as we can. So we want to continue to make money because that'll start to lower our unrest as well, I believe. So keep going. Need a Palmer video? No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. I'd rather I'd rather play literally anything else at tier eight. I hate the Palmer. All right. Oh, so we are making money. So just slowly over time, cranking up our budget. Just takes time. Early game, pretty, pretty straightforward so far. Um, I forgot to increase the, uh, or try to improve relations with U.S., I don't really have the naval prestige to keep trying to like pick fights either. That's the other thing. Like I, I can't do both. I, I fear that we're on a collision course with the United States, which is not ideal. Um, I definitely want to go to war with the Italians, but uh, I'm worried about the U S the U S is definitely going to be a problem. I have a feeling just call it a hunch, just a hunch. Slowly cranking that, that tech budget up. Next. Large industrialists propose the redistribution of the government's budget in favor of the, United, the industrial sector at the expense of the Army and the Navy budgets. What is your reaction? I mean, I, I, I got to try to get the GDP growing. So I do need to do this. It's going to reduce my naval budget, but hopefully the increase in GDP will make up for it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay. Still provoking the Italians, so that's good. Um, are, is this getting worse? It's not getting worse at the moment. It's at 58 I would like to try to improve relations if we can. But uh, if we fail it again, I might just let it ride and just keep trying to poke the Italians. Um, financially, let's go ahead and put a little bit more. 
I mean, we're starting, we're starting. I mean, look at this. This is going to take so long if we don't get some budget going. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. What up, Shida? Welcome. Um, on the fourth mod slot, I always recommend, uh, gyrate, or not gyrating drill bits, but, uh, artillery plotting room. I mean, even going with the secondaries, like, you can, if you want, but, uh, gyrating drill bits, or, what, what the hell am I talking about? Artillery plotting room is so good that, uh, like, it's, it's hard to pass that up. That's, that's a lot of main gun accuracy right there. Okay, we're up to six naval prestige, so that's good. We are building three battleships. Uh, we've got a little bit of money in the bank. Not much. Keep keep a little bit here and there. Every little bit counts early in this. We're almost through the first year of the campaign. Would giving ships to the U.S. help if you can do that? Uh, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. The German Empire is offering a trade agreement, which it turns out to be more profitable for them than for us. It is promoted as a safety measure for the future, securing our current good relations. If we refuse it, it will surely affect our relations negatively, should we accept. They're literally trying to extort us. The Germans are trying to extort us already. They're like, hey... Just so you know, we're building a big navy. We're more, we're, we're stronger than you, so you should probably, you know, give us some money. That's, that's what they're doing. They're literally, they're, they're extorting us. And I'm going to tell them to go f*** themselves. Because screw that. Uh, asked a question about the foreign policy United States government. What is your answer? Uh, that often conflicts with our own. United States government is reasonable. This gives us a chance to earn a little bit. So let's go with this. It's, it is going to cause a little bit of unrest. But it helps us smooth things out with the U.S. a little bit, hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah, our relations are getting much better with the U.S., so that's good. Uh, keep increasing the tension with the Italians, though. Uh, how is it against the uh, Germans now? What are, what are we looking like? Germans are starting to dislike us a little bit, but it's really not that bad. Uh, we'll see how that that plays out but uh yeah just keep cranking up the budget just a little bit at a time just a little bit you can see how all the numbers are starting to drop down significantly as we start to approach a decent amount of budget actually going into tech so the sooner we can get that like going the better uh how big is our okay we're at 40 percent towards the new upgrade so Keep that going. What is the best line for drawing battleships? I'm assuming you mean brawling. Uh, brawling battleships, probably the German battle cruisers um, or the British battle cruisers. Both of them are fantastic. The the Germans have the advantage, I think, in terms of survivability over the uh, the British, but the British do have fun. Um, but yeah, the the German battle cruisers are probably your best brawlers. Hands down. Hey, we actually got some tech unlocked. Isn't that nice? Okay, Austro-Hungarians are starting to strengthen their alliance with us. Very nice. Or their, their feelings towards us. I mean, they're a potential adversary in the future, but for now, I don't mind if they're not pissed off at us. Okay, uh... Again, I kind of want to improve relations with the U.S. What is our naval prestige? Well, we don't have the prestige right now. Probably wouldn't be a good idea. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go for it anyway. Let's just go for it. Finances, we're doing okay. Keep going. All right. First year is gone. We should be getting pretty close to having our battleships coming out, too. Foreign journalists approached you asking about a high-ranking person from the Chinese Empire. I've never heard of him. 
Uh, I refrain from commenting, or I believe he is an outstanding officer and an acquaintance with him would be an honor. Uh, I mean, there's no reason not to suck up to the Chinese. Right? I mean, no reason to piss off the Asians over there. Like Jap Japan, China, I mean, they're, they're right there next to us in our, our territory on that side of the world. So no reason to piss them off. So yeah, I believe he's an outstanding officer. Not trying to necessarily form an alliance. I just don't want everybody to be pissed off at us. So, like, yeah, I mean, the Chinese, the Japanese, no reason to piss them off. So anything that pops up over this neck of the world, like, we got a lot of territory over here. I'd rather not get in a fight with these guys halfway across the world, is what I'm saying. <laughs> like, there, there are some dis diplomacy options that we have to employ as the Spanish here. We can't just pick a fight with everybody in the world all at once. That is not going to end well. So we gotta we gotta be a little bit more diplomatic than we normally would be. All right, keep increasing the tensions with the Italians, please. Our naval prestige is getting not not ideal. Uh, our unrest has also improved or has also gone up a little bit, which is a little scary. Uh, so yeah, we failed our our attempt at improving with U.S. Not ideal. Why are these guys not in their freaking port? Get in a port! Move. God dang it. I hate when that happens. Is there anybody else that hasn't moved? Everybody else made it to their destination? Okay. Because that's costing us money. I didn't even notice until just now. So hopefully them getting into port, that'll save us a little bit of money. Uh, finances, keep it going. A little, little bit more each time. Starting to look a little bit more reasonable. Keep going. Send a pineapple pizza to the Italians. It'll surely increase tensions. <laughs> uh, could we see more spin the wheel vids? I mean, honestly, probably. Um, I usually try, like, when an update comes out, I try to get videos and all the new ships and stuff like that, so... First couple of weeks of the update, I usually try to focus heavily on new content uh, before jumping back into the older older style videos. But yeah, I'm sure I can. I also got to try to update the wheel with all the new ships that I have too, which is annoying. I've, I've added so many new ships to the freaking thing, I got to add them into the wheel. I gotta watch our unrest. If I get a chance to reduce it, I'm gonna have to take it. But yeah, I'm glad to see we got some people showing up on Easter. Hopefully you guys are having a great, great day. Get to spend some time with your families, hopefully. I know not everybody necessarily celebrates Easter, but for those of us who do, uh, even those of you who don't, I hope you guys have a great weekend as well. At a press conference, journalists question the combat ability of our fleet. What is your reply? The fleet is capable at any time to perform its task. Uh, that reduces unrest. Uh, that would need additional support but that reduces our gdp which is not happening and we're definitely not going to do that so um w that pisses off everybody and lowers our gdp so we're going to go with this first option the fleet is capable to perform at any time um and we just got gun cotton very nice very very nice all right we actually got some money starting to pour in now that we're in a port. So let's go ahead and increase this a lot more. We'll go with that. We're up to 70%. Beautiful. 
that it's going to start to bite into these quite a bit more. Okay, so this is Destroyer Light Cruiser. Okay, so this is one of the mods that he's he's done. He's separated like all the different things, like heavy cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships. All of these are now their own thing. Light cruiser, heavy cruiser, destroyer are all separate. So that's nice. Um, is there other things that are down here that he's changed? Oh, okay, so he's changed this. Okay, so we have the normal big guns and small guns, but we also have the, the really big guns. So we're going to be able to unlock much larger guns much sooner. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll see how that goes. Then, of course, we have the submarines. Uh, I lied. This is not submarine stuff. This is just hull stuff. Okay, fair. All right, uh, keep it going, I guess. Um, we've finished building our brand new battleships, so there's that. Uh, probably should be looking at refitting our fleet at this point. So if we go in here, if we look at our battleships, we should be able to refit the battleships with uh, gun cotton. I know that we unlocked that. I don't think we unlocked a whole lot of things. Oh, refit. Click that. Um, gun cotton was one of them, so we should be able to jump up there with gun cotton. I um, don't think there's a whole lot of other stuff that we've managed to, to get just yet. Okay. Uh, we don't have the ability to increase the gun length yet either, but I mean that that's a one month upgrade. We'll take it. It's not much, but it'll hopefully help with uh, a little bit. What up, Hash Brown? Welcome to the stream. For those of you who don't know, this is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It's a long-standing series that I've done on the channel. Uh, it is a game available through Steam. I am currently playing uh, or starting the brand new campaign for the Spanish Empire on Legendary Difficulty utilizing Brother Monroe's mod. Uh, so first ever modded playthrough on the channel. So looking forward to it. Let's go ahead and refit the ships. All right, they're probably, yeah, they're commissioning. So we got to wait for them to finish commissioning. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our heavy cruisers. See if we can't refit these guys as well. Oh, all right, I like these. Not too shabby. Let's go ahead and refit. Let's see if we can't uh, do some good here. So currently, I mean, 17.3 knots, spacious crew quarters is not too bad. Uh, Citadel 1, all the goods. Max AP, it is a 7.1 inch 31 caliber gun for the mains. I don't hate it. So let's just go for gun cotton there. Uh, we have the enhanced reloading. We also have torpedoes, apparently. You guys know I don't normally run torpedoes, but they're already here, so might as well. Um... We're using the compound armor as well. Yo, Thor coming in, dropping a $20 bomb on the chat with 20 gifted memberships. Thank you so much, man. Get a goat in the chat for Mr. Thor. Good Lord. Came out of nowhere. Appreciate you, man. Okay, so set up for max AP, actually. Uh, let's go standard ratio there. Um... Standard AP with base fuse, HE, enhanced reloading, standard torps, 15 inch. That's all fine. Armor is a little bit lacking because it's got such thick deck armor. Uh, in that case, I mean, I wouldn't mind dropping the deck armor down and adding a little bit of armor elsewhere. So let's drop this down to like five inches. Five inches. 
five inches. Take this up to like eight inches. Oh wait, that's maxed. Oh, that's why. Whoops. Okay, so yeah, this this was maxed out. That's why there was so much. Fair enough. All right, well, we should be a little bit better with the gun cotton. And uh, now that we've got standard ratio armor piercing, a uh, little bit reduction in the draft. Yeah, should be fine. Save it. Uh, yes, you do actually build your own warships in this game. What up, Thor? And thank you so much, my guy. Welcome to the stream. So, the game works. It's kind of like a modular sort of deal where they give you different halls for all the different things. Um, let's go ahead and view the uh, light cruisers too so we can look at those. So, it looks like we've got four inch guns. Yep, four inch guns pretty much everywhere. It is capable of 19.2 knots, which is pretty solid. It's low range, which is what you'd expect. Uh, many bulkheads. That's the one thing I didn't look at on the heavy cruiser, hoping that he had all the bulkheads. But uh, increased HE is fine for this thing. I don't mind that. Base fuse. Let's get this up to the gun cut. Again, we have torpedoes on board. It's not that shocking. Uh, enhanced reloading's fine. Yeah. Not much we can do here, so we'll just take it. I mean, we could probably throw a little bit more armor on this thing. Engine efficiency is absolute garbage. But I guess that's to be expected. All right, save it. But yeah, so it's kind of like a modular design where you can go in, you can build, uh, you have to research different elements, different guns, different uh, armor types, hulls that sort of stuff but once you do uh, you can actually just go ahead and, and build everything up proceed get that done get these refitted as well all right next turn Jessica, coming in with the $5 bomb. Thank you so much. Welcome back. And uh, yeah, we're back. We're back with some more Ultimate Admiral. <laughs> Glad you enjoy. During a visit, our foreign visit in the British Empire, our finance minister received a severe blow on his head by protesters. What are your comments? Express my concerns through diplomatic channels and demand the punishment of and of the perpetrators or make a diplomatic protest and increase military forces. Nah, these things happen and we should not risk increasing tension between the countries at this time. Things happen. All right. Also, get a goat in the chat for Jess. What up? OMG, what I love you, Spartan. I adore this game. Currently playing my Austro-Hungarian campaign. Ah, sorry, I am just stoked. What up, Jay? How's it going? Also, you've been hit by a bus. How's it going? Appreciate you dropping in. 
Thank you guys so much, man. You guys are always so generous. I appreciate you guys. All right. So with that, uh, we are losing a little bit of money, but it's not that big. And it'll go away once we finish refitting here. All right, finances, let's keep this going. Let's keep increasing our uh, tech budget a little bit at a time. We're up to 80% on the research budget now, which still isn't much given our uh, GDP is terrible. Our GDP is $9.6 billion. It's actually gotten worse somehow. How did we lose so much GDP? I don't understand. Our GDP is so bad. All right, we're at 60% there. Keep going. But thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully you guys enjoy. And it's always good to see new faces in the chat as well. Glad you guys enjoy. All right. We have now officially unlocked a torpedo boat, but I'm not worried about that. We can also build a heavy cruiser up to 7,000 tons. Not too worried about that either at the moment. Um, Finance-wise, I don't think we want to punch any more. I guess we can. Um, still at 25 unrest. We're at minus nine naval prestige. So I don't want to go too crazy with that. I mean, as soon as we get into a war with these guys, I feel like we would be able to do pretty well. Um, so I, I do want to get into a fight with them as soon as possible, preferably. Keep it going. One thing I didn't look at is uh, our relationship with the U.S., how it's doing. I think we reduced it enough that it shouldn't, like, start snowballing. Hopefully, it'll start reducing itself naturally. We'll see. All right, so, yeah, it's not getting worse. It's still where it was. So that's fine. We're about to keep poking uh, the Italians, so that's fine. Uh, let's keep raising our budget on research. Other than that, there really isn't a whole lot that I can do. I mean, the other thing that we could potentially do would be to move a fleet closer to Italy. That would potentially conflict. We have our battleship here, so we probably want to start moving a fleet there. So we got the two light cruisers at Mallorca. Um... Okay, let's move these two light cruisers over to Barcelona to be with our battleship. Okay, and then we have a heavy cruiser at Cadiz and a light cruiser at um, Malaga. So I think we're going to actually move the heavy cruiser over to Malaga. 
That leaves us with a heavy cruiser and three light cruisers to defend the Bay of Biscay. Uh, we have this fleet here that'll be right here inside the Mediterranean. We have our battleship fleet that's inside the Mediterranean. We have a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser, Santa Cruz. Beautiful. So that that's kind of our our fast response fleet for the African or the Western African side, and then of course we have our fleet over here in the Caribbean. Uh, we do have a battleship at Santiago. So let's go ahead and move our ship from Habana over to Santiago, uh, and then we should have somebody at San Juan. Let's go ahead and move them over here to Santiago as well. So. We will have our Caribbean fleet based in Santiago. Shocker. Get everybody consolidated into our three fleets. And then we should also have our fleet over here ready to go. We have the battleship, two heavy cruisers, and a light cruiser there. And then we've got these guys out here in Guam. Let's go ahead and take these guys from Guam and put them at Manila as well. And that will be our Asian fleet. Or our Pacific fleet, I should say. So we have the Pacific fleet in Manila. We have the Mediterranean fleet in Barcelona and Malaga. And we have our Caribbean fleet in Santiago. Um, I mean, to put it actually, actually, to put it into perspective, I should probably, yeah, I don't want to put them all together. Actually, I, that would be a bad idea. Putting your entire fleet together in one spot is a terrible idea. Ask the uh, Spanish at uh, Santiago against the Americans. It did not, it did not end well. So let's, let's try to avoid that same tragedy again. All right, so we are losing a little bit of money, but that's because we're moving some people around, so that's fine. I can deal with a little bit of a loss for the time being. Let's just keep it going. What up, Ladon? How's it going? Kevin, good to see you. This game is a lot of fun, man. It's it's a different style of game, but it is a lot of fun. It's it's against AI, so you don't have to worry about like PvP or anything like that. It's all it's all just you versus the AI. Um, it's challenging enough, but not that challenging once you understand the, the like mechanics and stuff. Um, the, the hardest part of this game, I'm playing on legendary difficulty, so keep that in mind. I get a lot of negatives to me in terms of like cash flow and stuff. But once you start to get going, like once you get your economy going, like it snowballs pretty quick. All right. So, uh, still losing money as you'd expect. Let's check and make sure everybody's moved where they're supposed to. We don't have people just like sitting out in the ocean. Not 100% sure why we're losing so much money though. If we go here, uh, it's because these guys are in being. So let's go ahead and select all of these guys. Why isn't this working? There we go. I don't know. I was going to say, why is this not working? All right. Let's set everybody to be um, limited. That'll save us money. There we go. Now we have $2.5 million in surplus. Now we can crank up the budget. We've officially maxed out our tech budget for what it is. Uh, we are also maxed out on transport capacity, so that's good. Uh, now we can start to bump up our crew training a little bit. All right, and in that, let's just keep on rolling. Uh, politics, Italians, increase tension, please. But...
I know it's been a it's been a rough month for the channel. I ain't gonna lie. We uh went from having three months straight of like just absolute banger, just destroying YouTube, and then this month it just crashed. Like this month has been awful on the channel. But uh, it, that's the way it goes, ups and downs. It's been that way for, God, I've been doing this going on eight years this year. Can you believe that? I've been on YouTube doing YouTube videos for going on eight years. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. Crazy. All right. What does the research look like now? Still pretty crazy up here, but I mean, these are going to be expensive texts, so it makes sense. Uh, 76% towards the next upgrade to the shipyard. So we're fine there. All right, let's just keep it going. I think I called out Ladon. How's it going? Lots of technology getting opened. Very nice. I mean, honestly, we're what, two years in? Going on, yeah, going on two full years. And we haven't started a war yet, so we're doing pretty good. At least trying to uh, slowly ramp up tension with the Italians. While at the same time trying to do our job at uh, keeping ourselves out of trouble too much. Good evening, Capri. How's it going? Appreciate you dropping in, my dude. Hopefully you're having a good Easter. Okay. Relations with the Italians have continued to uh, devolve. Losing a little bit of money, so we're going to hold off increasing our budgets at the moment. Okay, GDP is at $10.1 billion, so starting to grow a little bit. All right. Next turn. We're about halfway to war at this point. What up, X3? How's it going? Appreciate you dropping in. Good luck with your World of Warships, my dude. Also, Scott, welcome. Good to see you, my dude. Hopefully everybody's having a good Easter. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, my butt's hurting. It's been a while since I've had to sit down and, and like stream like this. Might have to go get me a drink of water. I always forget water. Why are we still losing money? All right, let's drop the crew training down a little bit. How about that? That way we're gaining money instead of losing it. Um, politics, keep keep poking, please. 88%, uh, so we're very close to our first upgrade to the shipyard. Burn us. Keep it going. Early on when we're not at war, like, time flies when you're not at war in this game. As soon as you start having to deal with wars, like, the time slows down to a crawl. Because every single month is just, like, several minutes long. You end up in, in battles that last 15, 20, 30 minutes sometimes. Okay. All right, so the Italians are at this point pretty pissed with us. The United States is starting to get agitated with us as well. Are they, I mean, are they, they're not happy with the Italians, so I don't know why they'd be kind of poking us. 
I mean, everybody else is kind of happy with the Italians, so that might cause problems as we uh, irritate them a little bit. But I couldn't care less. They're they're my biggest like rival at the moment, or at least the the one that's most likely to be capable of, of fighting them. They're not building any current ships. They do have a bunch of cruisers. Jeff Dave coming in, dropping a $10 bomb with 10 gifted memberships. Thank you guys so much, man. Get goat in the chat for Jeff, too. You guys are crazy today. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the stream as well. Yeah, it's going to be tough, but that's why we like it, right? Like, if it was easy, it wouldn't be as much fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge. 92%, so I think we got, what, two more months and this finishes up? Next. Keep increasing tensions with the Italians. I gotta keep an eye on the Americans. Alright, let's go ahead and build the next expansion. It's a pretty big loss. Point two billion dollars. We'll see how this goes in the next in the next month. If it goes down, then we're fine. If it doesn't go down, then we're gonna have to adjust. Probably lower our tech budget a little bit. But the fact that we have a larger battle or a larger uh, shipbuilding capacity now should allow us to build uh, bigger battleships. So, we'll have to check into that. I definitely would like to get away from the, the little coastal barges that we have. A famous traveler from the United States made a flight over our territories with a hot air balloon. What do you say about this? It was an act of spying and enemy reconnaissance. Well, I don't want to do that because I want to kind of butter up to the U.S. for now. Congrats for the achievement. Gives us one unrest. Really? Really? A great example of why our country needs to develop its own balloons for traveling and military purposes. Um, that hurts the relations with the U.S., but drops the unrest, which, I mean, our unrest is starting to get a little bit high. Uh, God. I mean, it's only plus one unrest there. But it doesn't, like, drop our... I kind of want to go with this. I'm going with this. The Italian warns their head... Okay, fair enough. Seven-inch casemates. Very nice. Arabia has signed an alliance with the Chinese. Continuing to provoke the Italians. Keep trying to improve with the U.S. Uh, we are going to have to drop our budget a little bit here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Drop this down just enough to where we're making some money. All right. Let's go into ship design and see what we can do in terms of... We should have unlocked some new hulls for the battleships. We have the Battleship 1 and Battleship 2 hull. Um, this one can go a little bit faster. Or at least has a, a better hull form overall. Better resistance as well. 
Let's see what we got. It's not that much difference, to be honest. Oh, yeah, it is. Holy crap. Okay. Dude, these old school, like, bath toy looking battleships are hilarious. Ain't gonna lie. But this, this looks a little bit more normal. All right, let's, let's see what we can do here. So we have a large cage mass, which is going to give us plus 10 night vision, two and a half base accuracy. Uh, front tower one actually gives us a much better perks, so we'll go with that. Uh, rear tower, and it's just going to be better overall to go with rear tower two. Um, let's slide this as far forward as we can. Uh, actually, I lied. I kind of like it all the way to the back. I like it better back there. Then we might be able to get a gun up here. Alright. Uh, funnels. Probably just going to go with a standard funnel. Two of them. Um, 12,500 tons is the max. Okay. Um, 14.6 knots. I mean, I kind of want to go faster than that. So let's go for 18 knots. See what we can get away with here. Uh, the range is 5,500. That's fine. Let's go with standard crew quarters. All of this should be the same. There shouldn't be anything new there. Go with compound armor. Citadel. Okay. Guns. We have centerline guns. We can go up to 12-inch guns. I kind of like the 10-inch the guns early on. But these 12-inch guns are kind of screaming my name as well. It's a lot longer reload. And it's not really that much more accurate. I mean, it is, it is obviously a little bit more accurate. But I think the reload is going to make up for this being a little bit less accurate. So I think we stick with the 10-inch guns for now. Okay, so we're on the third one there. Second one there. Okay. Uh, for casemates, obviously we're going to go with the 4-inch casemates for now. Beautiful. Okay. Set it up for standard ratio. Max HE for the secondaries. We're going to use base with standard AP. Brown powder with gun cotton. Uh, enhanced reloading. All should be good. She gonna be a speedy, speedy battleship. Alright, so this is two of these, which gives us 12 total funnel capacity. Yeah, neither of these are gonna allow me to get that, I'm sure. I highly doubt that we could get two of these in here. Yeah, there's no way. So, yeah. It's about as good as we're going to get, I think. It's two of these. Slight aft weight offset. I mean, we could move this forward. Doesn't really help. Doesn't really help. We could pull this forward. Still doesn't really help. I don't want to move the guns because that's going to uh, increase the size of the citadel which is already pretty massive okay i mean honestly it's probably about as good as we're gonna get uh we could drop the main armor i mean we have a slight aft weight offset if we drop this down to like 11 inches um, 
the deck armor is probably not that important. I mean, we could go like one and a half inches all the way across. Still a little bit of an aft weight offset. Um, I, I do want like a two or three inch superstructure. This can go down to 10 inches. Take this up to a quarter inch. Take this down to 10 inches. 10 inch barbette. Six inches there. All well and good. All right, so that leaves us a little bit of weight to play with. We got about 600 tons to add to this ship. Uh, we have a lot of extra aft belt armor for some reason, so let's go with four armor there. Okay, that makes sense now. Okay, well, if we're going to do that, let's go ahead and move this back. Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get that. All right, so let's take this up. Can we go six inches? Definitely can. Okay, we can actually go even, even thicker. All right, let's go 10 inches. Okay, so 10 inches is just a little bit too much, so we'll drop that down until we get in range. So close. All right. So slightly less armor on the bow than on the stern, uh, but we are even, like evenly weight distributed across the ship. Um, pitch and roll aren't too bad, so we're good there. Yeah, I think this will be fine. What do we call this thing? Chode Tannic. Really, cheese, Really? Uh, can you build any battle cruisers? Nope, not yet. It's way too early, unfortunately. What do you guys got? Surely somebody's got a better, uh, a better name than Chode Tannic. These are our first official battleships. The other ones were like battle barges. Reina Victoria. Queen Anne's Revenge. <laughs> Toilet paper. Come on. Why you guys got to be so mean? Look at her. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. I love these dome turrets though, man. Those are so, they, they look so good. Like little bubble turrets. El Capitan. All right. Queen Anne's Revenge class. Save. Uh, we're going to probably be looking to build three of them again. Uh, it's going to be expensive. I don't know if I can build them all at the same time. Um, but but having three of these things, one for each fleet, would be a good idea, I think. It's a lot of money, though. I'm losing $8 million a month now. That is a huge chunk of our tech budget. If we drop this down, we're already maxed out, so we, we just cut our budget for transports in half. Um, still going to have to drop this down a little bit. Okay. 
that I can live with, I guess. That's a huge, huge loss in tech budget, but... I mean, we're going to get three battleships out of it. So, is what it is. Next turn. Uh, have we already done our politics? Yes, I think we have. We're very close to going to war, so hopefully... Hopefully... We go to war with the uh, Italians, it won't be too bad. Oh yeah, I gotta I gotta name them and, and put them in their proper fleet positions. Double hull bottom? Of course. As soon as we build a freaking battleship, then they come out with all the good stuff. Okay, well, whatever. Uh so one will be at Barcelona. One will be at, um, let's go to San Juan, and then the other one will be at Davao. All right, so we have the Queen Anne's Revenge. We have El Capitan. Senior Taco, Emperor Charles V. Got you. All right. So those will take about 13 months to build as well. And that'll give us six battleships, which is a formidable force. I think we can all agree. Um... Politics, Italians, let's keep trying to push them. The sooner we get to war, the better. Next. Uh, you don't technically get to turn them into uh, museum ships. We usually keep one of each class around of our battleships. So that at the end of the, the like campaign, we can kind of look back on them. But, uh, yeah. I don't know if we'll do that this time. We might. It's kind of tradition. Okay. Still, still punching them. Good. How's the United States looking? I mean, they hate us. We'll try to improve relations uh, again. As soon as we go to, as soon as we go to war... And start to like win battles. Our unrest should come down. Our naval prestige should go up. Like we should be fine. Assuming we win. Of course. Which is a big assumption. Alright. Let's bump this back up just a little bit. Okay, next turn. All right, I'm going to be right back, guys. I'm going to go run and grab a drink of water real quick. All right, and I'm back. Our shipping companies began to complain about additional restrictions of German Empire when passing the Suez Canal. What should we do? Uh, make an official protest, which reduces our relations with the Germans. Send a fleet to demonstrate our intent to protect the rights of our companies. Uh, that really hurts our relations. Or ignore that gives us unrest and drops our naval prestige. Um, uh, 
Yeah, I don't really have the money to do that at the moment. Let's just do a official protest. Okay, we have officially unlocked the ability to build battle cruisers. Uh, we'll have to check into that for sure. Sweden is officially wanting a couple of uh, Victoria class light cruisers. They will pay 25% in advance and then uh, they will pay the rest after eight months, which is a total profit of 110%. Well, this is huge. So yes, we will agree. I will build you some light cruisers, my guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will build you some light cruisers. Just make me some money. That's all I ask. Okay, so, um, what was he? We were just going to do something. Oh, wait, we just unlocked battle cruisers. Let's see what we can do for battle cruisers. I've never unlocked a battle cruiser this early on. Let's see what they look like. Okay, so, yeah, we're not going to be able to do it just yet, but when we upgrade the shipyard again, uh, it's got to be at least 17,500 tons of shipyard capacity in order to uh, build our first battle cruiser. So unfortunate uh what else do we got though we got armored cruisers which i mean we already kind of have we can kind of max that out uh seven thousand tons okay um what is this hull capable of 20 and a half 20 and a half knots so let's just go 20 point five knots Okay, main tower. Let's go front tower two. Rear tower. Funnels. That only gives us 20% engine efficiency. put two of those in which gives us 28 We're only going to be able to get one of those in it gets us 30 31 percent can't quite get that one in there Gets us 36%. Alright, I think that's probably as good as we're going to get there. So, 36% engine efficiency is terrible, but not much we can do about that. Go standard... Composite armor, double hull bottom, standard, citadel. Okay, casemates, four inch casemates, please. Okay, and then of course for the guns. Uh, we have the ability to put a six inch gun on these, or we could go all the way up to our 10 inch guns, but I, these are very, very heavy. I don't really want to go there. So I'm thinking probably a standard like 8-inch gun or a 9-inch gun. Reload time between the two isn't really that noticeable. There is a huge weight advantage to having just the 8-inch guns. So let's go with the 8-inch gun for now. Okay. Not bad. Not too shabby. Honestly, it just comes down to armor at this point. So throw, throw a little bit of uh, barbette armor on there for good measure. Standard ratio sounds good. Base fuse HE with a standard AP. Uh, throw gun cotton on there. Standard shell size with an enhanced reloader. All of these sound good. Uh, we don't have a lot of armor to play with, unfortunately. 
But we can drop some of the armor on these. So let's go like a nine inch gun or nine inch armor there. Uh, let's go with like a seven inch barbette. That's fine. Drop this down to like five inches. This should save us quite a bit of weight. And then we can transfer that into doing some uh, weight elsewhere. So I would like an inch of deck armor. So maybe we compromise and go like three quarters of an inch. Got a little bit of a four weight offset, but there's not much I can do about that. Um, everything else, I mean, we got a five inch main belt with a 1.44. So let's try to go with four inches up front, four inches at the rear. It's just a little too much. Okay, drop a little bit off the front. Little bit off the rear. There we go. All right, now she's balanced forward and aft. She is a little bit pitchy and rolly, but not much I can do about that. It's just the hull form. But, I mean, should be a formidable heavy cruiser. All right, what do we call our heavy cruiser? I'm not allowed to leave. We call for revolution. What up, Lobster? Good to see you. Yep, new campaign hype. The Trinidad class, huh? The Inquisitor class? Call it Heavy Cruiser. You guys are always so original. Uh, that's Inquisitor. Let's try, let's try, try a little bit extra. Inquisitor. There we go. I got you. All right. Um, I didn't look to see how much those cost to to build. They got to be cheaper than our battleships, right? So, yeah, they're not that much cheaper than our battleships. Our battleship, well, I guess they're about half the price of our battleships. That's not bad. About half the price. So, all right, I would like to build six of them. Two for each of the fleets. So, two of these. Be a Barcelona. Two of these should be in the Caribbean. Yeah, I guess throw them there. And then two of them will be in the Philippines. All right. And now we can uh, name the rest of them real quick. So, Navarra. Okay. What up, Ave? Welcome. What up, Megan? How's it going? You guys got any any more names for the uh, the other four of these heavy cruisers? Atocha, gotcha, or Ataka. Torquemada. All 
All right, there we go. All the heavy cruisers have been named. Uh, financially, we're in ruin, but not much I can do about that. Uh, we are going to have to put a couple of these on hold. So we'll probably pause this one, this one, and this one for now. Still over our limit. I forgot we are building a couple light cruisers for uh, other nations. So who's the one that we... I mean, the Philippines, we could probably put that one on hold. For now. That gets us under our limit. That gets us under our limit. All right. How much longer? So we got 11 months for the battleships, 12 months for these heavy cruisers to be built. Yo, Jeff coming in, dropping five more gifted members on the chat. Thank you so much, man. Get another goat in the chat for Jeff. Uh, The Brahma? Uh... I will have to, I will, I will get you in the next one. Okay, Koi? Remind me, uh, next time we build something, I'll, I'll try to make sure I get, get you a name, my guy. Actually, what was one of the names that somebody had already, uh, let's change Revolution to, uh, since our, I know Ghost Knight's already got a name. We'll, we'll get you Brahma. There you go. We got you, Koi. I always try, like, if we get more, if we get new people or newer people that haven't had a name yet, I, I try to get you guys involved, too. So, thank you guys so much for joining me. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget, if you guys are enjoying, to punch that like button. It does help the channel out quite a bit. All right, let's keep increasing the tensions with the Italians. Okay, next. Spaghetti and meatballs? Nope. <laughs> 19th century warships have been unlocked, huh? Interesting. All right, so we should be on the verge of war with uh, Italy at this point. We're very, very close. Um, United States still not very happy with us, so let's just keep trying to improve. Financially, we are in ruin. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie, we're, we're hurting. Drop that down a little bit. We are going to be losing a little bit of money, but it's fine. All right, how we doing? $10.5 billion GDP. Wartime economy be a kick in as soon as we go to war with the Italians, so just gotta hold out till then. We'll be fine. The Federico Gravina? Uh Cosm the yeah, Cosmi uh Chiruca? Jose de, de Cordoba and Juan de Austria. I do apologize because I, I am trying, but I suck at pronouncing things. So I apologize. All right. So politics. Keep poking. I need that war budget as soon as possible. Preferably. Uh, what are the Italians looking like right now? They're not building any ships. They are still at 29 heavy cruisers, 54 light cruisers. To put that in perspective, 221,000 tons worth of ships. We have 84,000 tons, so less than half of the amount of ships that they have. But we have three battleships. They don't. So we actually have an advantage in firepower in terms of that. So I, I like that, at least. Um, and we are building ships currently. So we're building 11 more ships, three of which are battleships. So... Yeah, I, I feel like we're going to be okay. Now, obviously, the biggest problem is how much firepower can we bring to bear, and that is a even bigger disparage because uh, we have our fleets spread out between three fleets. We've got the Caribbean fleet, the home fleet in the Mediterranean, and we have the fleet back here in Asia or the Philippines. So 
we also have a small fleet up here in the Bay of Biscay to help protect our, our Atlantic fleet here. But, and here at Santa Cruz as well. But they are kind of reactionary forces. They can flow in here if needed, or they help secure the, the territorial waters around our, our provinces that we own. But yeah, we are we are definitely struggling with money, as you'd expect. It's always the worst part about starting a new one. Relations have deteriorated further. Beautiful. All right. We are officially, I mean, any moment we're going to go to war with the Italians. Uh, I'm going to stop trying to improve relations with the United States because they seem to be uh, not open to improving. And we're just wasting influence that we don't have. We are still losing a lot of money, as you'd expect. No big deal. Keep it going. I don't think we can do anything with these guys. We already poked them, so we got to wait. Next. We're almost three years into the end of the campaign at this point. It's kind of crazy. Persia and the U.S. Sweden would like to order two more heavy cruisers. Um, I don't really have the build capacity for that at the moment. I can't. So you're just going to have to hold tight. We don't quite have enough to, to be able to do that just yet, Sweden. I appreciate you as an ally, and I'm glad you're willing to spend money on our ships. But uh, you're just going to have to chill for now, Sweden. Because we don't quite have the build capacity. All right. Politics should be able to continue to increase tension. So, yeah, I expect uh, next month we should probably end up having a uh, declaration of war. So, it's about to get spicy, folks. It has taken us two years to get to this point, but it's official. Okay, you, you can't have a battleship anytime soon, my guy. I just don't have the capacity. Uh, yeah, we're still not at war. I'm sure we will be next month. Because like I said, we are literally at, like, we're knocking on the door. Still losing money. Not ideal. Okay, next turn. Happy Easter, Iron Man. Appreciate you dropping in. Speak in Parliament about the... I mean, it's not the Germans that are going to be the problem. Oh, but this one... This one gets us plus 2% GDP. Let's go with that. Get that GDP rolling. Losing money, but it's fine. We can handle it. We can handle it. Increased tension. Come on. Get this war started already, man. It's ridiculous. All right.
How close are we on these? Two more months until these ships are built for the Swedes. Okay, next turn. You dare ignore me, Italy. You dare ignore me, Italy. You won't be able to ignore us much longer, I can promise you that. The Spanish will rise again. You are but a stepping stone on our path to greatness. You visited an international weapons exhibition and journalists asked about your impressions. You were not particularly interested. Our industry can produce much better weapons, but we cannot yet demonstrate them because they are secretly developed. Uh, some of the weapon exhibits were fascinating and superior to our own, so we will consider adding them to our arsenal. That increases a little bit of unrest, but gives us a nice little budget bump. And then we realize that our country is keeping pace with global military. That reduces unrest slightly, so I'll take that. Uh, Sweden, I can't, my guys. Chill. I, I want to help you. I really do, but I can't. I'm about to go to war myself. Like, I'm legitimately on the verge of war. I can't. Can't do it, Captain. All right, so we have a little bit of uh, build capacity. So we could probably go ahead and unsuspend. Let's see, who's, who's, we got this one in Barcelona. Uh, let's actually unsuspend this one in the uh, Philippines. That uh, leaves us right on the verge. So yeah, we're good there. Okay. Three years into the campaign, we still have not gone to war yet. That's kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. We are losing a good chunk of money, but we should be okay. As soon as we go to war, that won't be a problem. Well, I mean, at this, this point in history, I think Sweden is probably worried about the Germans as most people were at this point in history. I mean, they are literally right across the water from them. Can't really blame them. Okay, so they put one of our light cruisers over here at Gothenburg, and one at Stockholm. All right, so we're halfway done with our next expansion on our shipyard, which will take us up to being able to build battle cruisers. We're at minus 93%. Come on. Give us the event that gives us the uh, fight with the Italians. You know you want to, game. Come on. Mr. Lances, welcome. Happy Easter to you as well. Welcome to the new, uh, the new Spanish campaign. Also, Crazy Noofy, how's it going? Welcome to the stream.
Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That's a, that's a lot of ships to be selling. Come on. Make us fight. God bless America. Or God bless Spain. All right, well, keep going. All I can do is keep pushing the buttons. <laughs> Tell them pasta sucks. That'll get their goat. Just show up and start saying mozzarella instead of mozzarella. It's mozzarella. Ah, here we go, boys. The Italian Empire has sent us an ultimatum demanding to withdraw our fleet that is operating near their borders, claiming that it threatens their trade lines with neighboring countries. Their government requires your advice, or our government requires our advice on how to reply. This is an absolute disgrace. We should never accept this. If they want war, then so be it. Uh, the government asks your opinion on submarines. Uh, given that there are no submarines in this mod, I would say that uh, I believe they are extremely limited in their operational usefulness. Some industrialists want to invest in mon uh, modernization of the United States shipyards. What is your opinion? Any cooperation should be mutually beneficial. Uh, we should also call United States businessmen to invest in our shipbuilding. Yes. Okay. We're officially at war, boys. Look at all the money we got now. All right. It's time. A uh, little, little finances. Crank up the budget. I know we're still losing money at this point, but hey, it's a thing. Okay, we can't, we can't crank up the budget that much. Crank this budget up because we're going to need that. Drop this budget down just a little bit. Uh, increase crew training to an adequate amount, preferably. We can drop this back down a little bit. That should be fine. We could probably drop this down a little bit. And then bring this back up a little bit. There we go. All right. Barcelona fleet, let's go. Time to time to sail over here and say hello. Where's the enemy fleets? Where is the enemy fleet? Okay. All right, well, in that case. <gasps> the new battleships are just now coming online. Okay, we'll, we'll wait for them to finish commissioning first. Uh, but we should be able to go ahead and resume these now. Yeah, we're good there. Beautiful. Absolutely B E A U T F U L. All right. Let's send these guys over for now. Kind of into the central Mediterranean. All right, I lied. Let's send them, send them over here to the western Mediterranean. Off the coast of uh, Sicily. And uh, Caligari. Or, Caliar, or Cagliari. Good lord. All right. War is upon us. We are losing a lot of money because we are now putting our fleets to action. Uh, I know it's it's not ideal, but it is a thing. Finances are rough, man. 
All right, maybe we'll just kind of chill a little bit. We don't need that to be super crazy. Let's drop this back down just a little bit. Boy, our, our budget's not just, it doesn't exist. All right, let's go with that. I really thought we'd have a little bit more budget here, but we definitely need to keep the crew training going now that we're at war. So, all right, next turn. We have our first battle. This should be interesting. What up, Puddin? How's it going? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Didn't we end the Japanese uh, campaign by invading Italy? Uh, yeah, actually. You're not wrong. All right, we have the light cruiser Leg Legera versus the light cruiser Luigi Cardona or Cadorna. Uh, comparable. There's a slightly bigger, slightly more guns. It should be relatively comparable fight. It's just going to come down to who who's more accurate, I guess. I don't like our odds. And we're in a storm. A nasty storm at that. Okay, enemy spotted to the east, so we're going to make a turn. Speed up time. Enemy spotted. All right, let's turn towards him here. Start opening fire on him, please. land the first hit. Torpedoes are in the water. Torpedoes are in the water. Slow down. Torpedoes landed. And down he goes. All right. So we get to score the first first kill of the, the new war. We'll take it. Took a little bit of damage, but overall, pretty inconsequential. First kill goes to Spain. Conditions were definitely not favorable for a fight, but uh, we'll take first blood. It's always good. All right. Well, I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Still losing so much money, though. I'm assuming that's going to be repaired now. Yeah, Legira is going to be repaired for a month. The battleship should be commissioned next month. Yeah, we got to wait. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in the Santa Cruz fleet as well. Bring them over here to the central Mediterranean. Um, Bay of Biscay, you guys can hang out for now. We'll use the battleships to, uh, to do what they got to do next month. All right. Finances though, man, the finances are going to kill us. That's the biggest problem right now. I need, I need this to be a thing, but I also need this to be 
reduced. It's crazy. Like, I just, I don't have the money. It's crazy. The wartime budget seems like it's been reduced or something, because, good lord. We just don't have any budget. That is a lot of our transports getting sunk, potentially. Well, they only sank two of them, so we'll take that. Alright, this is a huge fleet, so let's go ahead and try to take them on. Eight heavy cruisers and 14 light cruisers. That is a gigantic amount of ships that we could potentially sink early on. If we can get fortunate enough to do it, that'd be huge. That'll be huge, man. All right. Financially, we are in ruins, as you'd expect. Still trying to train up some crew. Okay. Next turn. Uh, they had a lot of ships, but they're all, like, heavy cruisers and light cruisers. So, if you look, the Italians currently have 82 ships. And it's 29 heavy cruisers, 53 light cruisers. Total of 219,000 tons, whereas we have 27 ships. Six of them are battleships with uh, 139,000 tons. So we're starting to catch up in terms of tonnage. We're not the smallest navy anymore. The uh, Japanese technically have a smaller navy than we do. But only just. Okay, where did they go? They've disappeared. Okay, they're over here. All right, let's go uh, poke poke them. Liz. All right, we got a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser here. I'm not going to go too crazy. I want to kind of keep our distance here. Uh, light cruisers? Yeah, we should be able to do that. Yeah, we got the tonnage for it. That's fine. Dude, we, these guys are terrified of our battleships. Can't really blame them. Uh, in that case, let's split up. Let's take the Queen Anne's Revenge. Okay, let's move. Split up. Take the Queen Anne's Revenge. And Ligeria, or Ligeria. Move them. And then these guys can move up here and rendezvous with those guys. Next. What up, Gaspacio? How's it going? What bug? That's a lot of money to end up paying, man. I ain't got that kind of money. All 
All right. So these guys are here. Let's go ahead and move them into the Adriatic. All right, let's also go ahead and bring these guys up. Taking rendezvous with these guys. Get a few more cruisers together. Um, trying to get our battleship to actually get in a fight here. But it seems like the Italians aren't interested in fighting. Shocker. Shocker. Meanwhile, France is gobbling up all the territory in Africa. Our government refuses to, like, actually try to take anything. Not too shocking there. Alright, let's keep it going. Next turn. Hopefully we can start to get some battles going here in this war. Before we run out of money, preferably. Uh, what made me choose Spain? I haven't done Spain before, and I know it's, it would be a challenge. So that was the main reason. You can get dev strikes and high damage for 2k health ships. Um, I mean, if it's if it's a legitimate bug, you can go into uh, the Discord channel into uh, bugs, and and sit it there. Dude, these guys are just flat out like avoiding us. Okay, they don't currently have anything in this region so let's pull these guys back over see if we can't get them to fight one way or the other move these guys back around see if we can't we got to get these guys to fight us one way or another we are losing money very quickly. And we're losing transports. Dude, I I don't know why our budget is so fucking low, man. Lord have mercy, we just don't have anybody. We, we can't afford to do anything. And they're not fighting us either. They're just like sailing around avoiding us. Which is really annoying. I don't know if they do have the budget. They uh, keep warning their head of admiralty. For excessive naval expenditures. Of course, I'm going to get a warning here pretty soon. I just think it's dumb. Like, I, I've literally sailed up to their fleets multiple times, and they just refuse to uh, let me fight them. 
What are the annoying? Look, they're just right back here again. All they're doing is just dodging me. They're, they're, they don't want to fight. They legitimately do not want to fight us. You'd think they have the numbers advantage. You would think they'd want to fight, but they they just don't want to fight. It's really, really annoying. I think the game needs to give you more... Um, more control over starting the engagements. I shouldn't have to rely on RNG to decide whether or not I engage somebody. Like if I, if I sail my fleet right up to an enemy fleet that we know is there, I should be able to start an engagement. Yeah, see, now they just dodge us again. They're just running. That's all they're doing. Now they're all the way over here. So dumb. So dumb. Well, we're about to go bankrupt, which is not ideal. We're behind in technology. Shocker. It's almost like I have no goddamn budget to actually be able to do anything with. And once again, they just dodge us every step of the way. This is so dumb. Why won't they fight us, man? They literally have an entire goddamn fleet. Two different fleets to fight one fleet that has three ships in it. And they refuse to engage. Ugh. Hate it. We're going to hold off on that because I need the money. So let's bump up our crew training a little bit. And then bump this up a little bit. All right, next turn. So far, we've had a single battle, and it was legitimately... A light cruiser versus light cruiser. Look, they just they they want nothing to do with this fight. Maybe if I just bring my heavy cruisers over. I think they'll engage these guys. At this point I'm willing to do just about anything. Watch, I'll move this guy over here to try to block this fleet in here. They will somehow teleport out of here in the time it takes me to get over there. And then this fleet will end up over here to dodge this fleet. Because they just don't want to fight us, right? They're, they're cowards. 
They're legitimately cowards. Pathetic. Pathetic! Not trying to lower my transports. They're lowering my transports. I just can't afford to, like, put any money into it. That's the problem. Like, I don't have any goddamn money. Like, legitimately, they just don't want to fight me. It's a waste of my time. They're just sailing around with their thumb up their ass. Put this fleet back in the, the port, I guess. It's stupid that I have no control over whether I engage these guys. I can put my fleet right on top of them, and they still won't engage them. And yeah, they, they somehow teleport out of the Adriatic through my ship. And then I'll sail over here, and they'll do the same thing over here, right? Like, do I have to take my battleships and put them by themselves in order to, like, bait somebody into fighting them? Because I'll do it. At this point, I'll try anything. Here, let me fucking take my battleship, put it by itself. It is a single battleship. Surely, nine heavy cruisers and 16 light cruisers would engage a single battleship, right? Right, game? They're somehow tearing up my transports. I don't understand how that works. Oh, did we finally get a fight? Let me guess. It's the one battleship. I have to literally make it a 1v fucking 30 just to get the AI to actually take a fight. Just a guess. No, they decided to actually engage the other fleet. Oh, isn't that nice? Finally. It only took us, what, six months of chasing them around the Mediterranean for them to finally decide to fight us. Well, let's make the most of it. Oh, there's no chance that we have enough tonnage to enable invade their their homeland. No chance at all. We only barely have enough in our fleet to navally invade, period. So, we got to make the most of this engagement. We got to try to stay outside 0.9 kilometers because that's what their likely torpedo range is.
this fleet of ships. in the water. It's curving in. It's going to hit us. It's a dud, thankfully. More torpedo hits. They're about to lose a heavy cruiser, potentially. Oh shit. He just fucking dumped the torpedo out of his asshole. Target that fucker and get him out of here. You've almost got him dead. Did I or did I not target that man right there? That man has taken, what, 30 torpedoes at this point? He's still afloat. Look at him. He's gonna heal. He's actually gonna fucking survive. He took two sets of torpedoes from one cruiser, took another set of torpedoes from another. So, so fucked. God, I hate these early battles, man. They're so dumb. Yeah, just fucking torps the piss out of my fucking thing. He fires a torpedo at point fucking blank. Rams me. Completely fucking surrounded. Can't fucking land any goddamn hits. And I think we just lost our fucking heavy cruiser. Yeah, that checks out. Finally landed at some more torpedoes and killed something. Set them to dodge torps. And of course, Ligera just had torpedo detonation. Of course it did. Alright, we detach these guys. These guys are gonna fucking get get themselves killed for no fucking reason. Retreat. I lied. Don't fucking retreat. Go in that direction, because you guys will be too stupid to fucking actually get out of the way. You'll sit there and do circles the whole fucking time. And there they go. Oh, this is a fucking disaster, dude. It's a fucking disaster. He shits out torpedoes, hits us. We shit out torpedoes, hit him. Let me guess. We die, he doesn't, right? That's how this works.
Hit him with more torpedoes. This man has taken about 30 fucking torpedoes in one battle. I can't seem to get away. This guy still has torpedoes. It would help if our fucking guys didn't just immediately torpedo or shoot the goddamn ocean. Like, if, if our fucking guys actually targeted the motherfuckers and did damage, it would be nice. He just shoots the fucking ocean! Like, come on, man! Hit the fucking ship! Lord have mercy! do I have to be to fucking hit something? 57% chance, right? Completely missed. 57% chance to hit the fucking target. Missed. You hit the fucker. Look at that damage. Lord have mercy. What are the fucking odds? It only took you this long to figure out that if you hit the fucker, you can actually do damage. What a crazy concept. What a crazy concept. fucking talking look at that what a fucking crazy concept is that the death of him or is he gonna somehow survive that shit too I bet he survives it where are you going San Giorgio Manages to heal all that shit back. Stops the flooding. Dude can take a full fucking salvo from a battleship with 12 inch or 10 inch guns and get away with it. How are we looking over here? Just try to get that direction. Obviously, the fear here is that I end up running into the rest of these fuckers and their torpedoes. So I don't want to go too crazy. And I know this guy still has torpedoes. We're not able to aim, right, game? We can't we can't see the direction that the guy is going and aim the fucking guns. Or 
course not. Look, still, still no aiming. Haven't discovered the target, right? Oh, now we have. Now we have. Suddenly, suddenly we have. Just takes all fucking day to get like one, one shot to finally hit the target, and then it doesn't fucking kill the guy. to miss and it resets our aiming once again what a what a great fucking gaming experience man like if it wasn't to the fact that this gets reset every fucking time it wouldn't be a problem but this is this is an aiming bug like it just stops fucking learning how to aim it'll fire 30 fucking times and it'll keep resetting over and over and over again Fucking obnoxious. Hate it. Our light cruiser is gonna get away. That's good news. If only our fucking battleship could land some hits! Lord have mercy, this is like right in your wheelhouse. This should be perfect fucking shots. I understand it's old tech, but god dang, man. You're basically barrel stuffing the man. How can you not fucking hit him? Okay, reset the aiming again. It just keeps resetting over and over and over again. Now it's up to 9.2%. And then by the time we get loaded again, it'll be back down to zero for some reason. Hate it. Uh, Kep, this is Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is a PC game where you get to design and build your own ships and then take them into battle. We are currently playing the campaign on Legendary Difficulty. Oh my god, dude. I'm gonna lose it. And it reset my aiming again. What is their armor scheme? Dude, if I had a dollar for every time this game just makes you shoot right in front of them. It knows where it needs to aim and it refuses to hit it. It's not RNG, it is simply the game saying no, you're not allowed to hit anything. That's all it is. So dumb. Notice that it reset our aiming again. Oh look, now we're up to a 92% chance to hit. Oh, wouldn't that be fucking nice? If only the aiming wouldn't just keep going all the way to zero every fucking time we, we look at something. Is it good enough? Probably not. Okay, he did go down. We got a kill. Holy shit. What a concept.
Come on. At least we know our battleship can take a fucking beating. Because these guys can't do shit to us. Which is good news for us. The only thing we gotta worry about is torpedoes. And they're like right on the verge of being able to shoot them. Come on, damn it. Twenty-four percent chance to hit this guy on our next shot. Surely, ten-inch high explosive will do it, right? Surely. Hey, okay, we hit him, but didn't do enough damage. Try AP on the next next salvo. Okay, we just got a flood with the uh, secondaries. Overpin. Got a flood, but yeah, not ideal. Should be enough to kill. Okay. Speed up time. Let's circle back towards these guys. See if we can kill some more. Like I said, the only only real threat that they have to us is those torpedoes. See if we can close the distance here. Okay. Next shot should be decently accurate. Up to a 50% chance to hit. We hit, but didn't do that much damage with a partial pin. Uh, have a happy Easter, Jess. Appreciate you. Have a good night. Have a good night, Lanzas. Appreciate you. Oh, I'm not ramming them. That's too much damage. too much damage to take. Alright, we're going to try AP on the next stop. Overpin, but no fire. Or no flood.
target both both sides of the ship here. Blocks 10 inch A, B, really. I don't know, believe it. We've had a lot of hits on our ship, but not a lot of damage. And even our crew has not really had any trouble, so. speed up time. Could leave the battle now, but I, I'm pretty confident I can kill a couple more of these guys. And since it's been so hard to get these guys to actually fight us to begin with, like, the sooner we can get rid of these guys, the better. Come on, baby. Huge hit. That's what we need. More of that. Good lord. Looks like the rest of their fleet is retreating. So we're going to close the distance and try to finish this guy off. And then that might be the end of it. Though I will likely go after those uh, heavy cruisers too. Okay, down he goes. Right, their heavy cruisers are a little bit faster, but they're both damaged, so I should be able to catch up to these guys. We have taken very little damage in terms of our battleship, so I'm pretty happy with that.
punish him. Come on, Queen Anne's. Send him to the Shadow Realm. Beautiful hit. Is that gonna do it? I think that's gonna do it. Switch targets. Slow down a little bit. Get that aiming on on target. One good shot at this heavy cruiser should be enough to take him down. And if this has taught me anything, it just reinforces the idea that our cruisers are pretty much fucking useless. So just worry about battleships, leave the cruisers at home. I think that's probably the end of the San Giorgio, but uh, I think I'm gonna wait and see. Seems to be flooding. Yeah, I think he's done. I think he's done. All right, speed back up. Let's close the distance on these light cruisers. This is the one that's going in the right direction, so we'll target him first. Alright, let's start turning ourselves out. Want to maintain a little bit of a cushion. Don't want to get torpedoed. Their guns are useless against us, so... Nothing else, I feel like we've built an effective tank. Let's focus this guy here, since he's kind of like a little bit closer.
Come on. Get the guns aimed in, please. It's a long fight. Swing and a miss, but our next shot shouldn't shouldn't be a problem. Shot shouldn't be a problem. Swing and a miss, and it reset our aiming. about going back and playing some more arm straight tycoon tanks uh they've done a lot of updates to it since the last time we played it so i'm looking forward to getting back into it uh probably very soon possibly even this week so keep an eye out for a stream of that not sure what day or what time but i definitely am considering getting back into it i've been keeping an eye on it God, the amount of times we swing and a miss. And then, of course, what happens? Resets the aiming again. I'm telling you, man, it's busted. No reason we should be getting our aiming reset like this. They're not changing course. We're not changing speed. We're matched each other side by side. There's no reason the aiming should get reset every time we pull the trigger. Resets the aiming again on this one. I'll probably just uh, end the battle. And it did. Okay. Whatever. Let's go ahead and end the battle. 833 crew lost for us. We lost a heavy cruiser and a light cruiser, unfortunately. Uh, uh, Legira was one of the ones that actually uh, got the first kill for us, but uh, unfortunately. Um, not a good good fight for us, but we did end up sinking seven of their ships, including four heavy cruisers. So uh, pretty happy with that. Overall victory for for the Spanish. It was a short victory for the Ligera after her first combat, but uh, is what it is. We just gotta protect our cruisers a little bit better. What up, Guten Tag? Appreciate you dropping in. Um, we're going to fight to the end. Sorry, but uh, I'm not ready to give up yet. I want to sink some more ships. Costa Rica's new leader was uh, to support armed terrorists. Uh, we need at least 14,277 tons. Okay, fair enough. Um, all right, this is the part where I'm going to like struggle. Where the hell is Costa Rica? 
I'm not crazy, right? Like, is it just not showing up on the map? When I think of Costa Rica, I think it's down here, right? Am I crazy? Is Trinidad? Dominican Republic. Dude, I am... My brain is cooked right now. Where the hell is the... Galapagos Islands. I was gonna say, I don't think it actually showed up. I think it's I think it's not highlighted on the map for sure. Where is it? It's in the Caribbean. That's what I thought. I'm not crazy. Like I know it's here somewhere. Nassau, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands, Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Virgin Islands, the French Antilles, British Antilles, Port of Spain is rolled by Britain. Oh, right there. <laughs> like, I don't know why I was thinking it was an island. I was like, where the hell is Costa Rica? Okay, there we go. I was thinking it was an island. That's how, that goes to show I don't know much about South America. <sighs> or... Central America, I guess it would be. Got North America, South America, Central America. I'm tired, guys. Leave me alone. Uh, speaking of which, I think after that battle, I think it would be a good place to go ahead and finish our first episode. Um, we're not doing great, but we're not doing terrible. Uh, we're winning our first war against the Italians by about three to one so far in victory points. So we got to keep going there. Um, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I know it's, it's not as long as a stream as I normally do, but I am getting kind of tired. So I don't want to drag this out if, if uh, you guys aren't going to be able to, to like uh, understand anything. If I can't articulate a thought without like hesitating. <laughs> I don't think you guys are going to, like, you guys will be falling asleep on me. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, we will be doing this at least once a week, maybe maybe doing multiple streams a week. Just keep an eye out. Always make sure you have the notifications on if you guys are interested in these. Thank you guys, as always, for your generosity and for punching that like button. We're at, we got 56 likes already on the first stream, so thank you guys so much. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.